choose to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt ring. Right, the bouncer's guilt ring. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan. Go do it, in my accent. This is Colin McGuigan for... No, that was terrible. Oh my days. You got one more go, go. No, I can't do it. Can't. Wow, you flopped. Frank, first question is, Sandy Ryan on the end of a devastating decision from the judges. Just talk me through that. Yeah, terrible, terrible decision. It's, it's sad to see because these people change people's lives. You know, these, these decisions, these scorecards. You know, Sandy Ryan should be unified world champion tonight, but she isn't because someone's incompetence, really. Um, and, you know, I'm sure the commission will look at it. And it wasn't the only bad scorecard. You know, it was a 96-94 in the kind of M fight as well, which was awful. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, as always, these things need to be looked at. Um, because, like I say, someone like Sandy Ryan tonight would have changed her life. Uh, she'll be back. You know, we'll look at getting the rematch on, um, and I think you know, I think it will go the same way. But yeah, terrible to see. Immediate rematch in the UK, most likely. Let's see. Let's see. We'll we'll see on location. Um, but hopefully, we can get it over the line for early part of next year. Connor Ben in a really tough fight. There is that good matchmaking or bad matchmaking in your opinion? I actually Shout out Kevin Rooney. Yeah, Kevin Rooney. He was very nervous, to be honest. Um, look, I, I actually think it's good for him. He's been out the ring for 18 months. He's been training hard the whole way through. And if we want to go into the types of fights we're talking about going into in December, he would have got nothing out of going in against someone who he knocked out in 65 seconds of the first round. And what, you know, what, what would it have done for him? Um, so I think it was exactly what he needed to get those rounds out of the way, get any ring rust. He says there wasn't ring rust, but look, when you've been out of the ring that long, um, you're bound to, you know, you're bound to have some. And you know, I think he boxed really well. I think he actually boxed brilliantly. Um, and you wouldn't have known he was out of the ring that long. Uh, and he was in there with a, a tough, tough man with a, an amazing chin who'd never been stopped before. And I don't think we'll ever get stopped. Is the reality. He, someone said he borrowed Canelo's chin for the night. Eddie came out of the ring and said, we're signing him straight away to me. Are you going to sign him to your Mexican stable? And do you believe that he can be a problem in the UK for other other fighters? I'm sure he'll, he'll fit on one of our Mexican shows for sure. Now, we do a load of shows in Mexico, obviously, and he's definitely got a place on there um, because you know he did not stop coming forward. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's something we can do together. Richardson Hitchens gets the win against Jose Cepeda wasn't the most pleasant fight on the eye, but sometimes these things happen. Pro Gray Haney likely to be announced within the next seven days for San Francisco in December. How does Richardson Hitchens fit into this? Yeah, look, I mean, it wasn't the most crowd-pleasing fight. That's just the reality. You know, there's no point shying away from it. Um, he, look, Richardson's a brilliant fighter, um, but he just needed to throw more punches, really, is the reality. He was waiting a lot. Um, look, Zapita was a was a step up for him and a test, and we all knew it was a test. Um, and the fight just didn't gel. We thought it would, but it didn't. Um, but I think now that the difficulty is he needs to be more active. So if he's going to build into a star that we believe he can be, you know, he, he needs to put in performances more entertaining than that. And look, he's hard to he's going to be hard to beat. You know, it's going to be hard for anyone to beat him. But at the same time, if we want to build him into the position. Um, you know, he prob he needs to throw more punches. Um, but you know, look, it was a it was a sh shutout win. I think he won one twenty one oh eight on two cards and one one nine uh, one oh nine on on another. But yeah, I think uh, there's some work to be done there still. And get out early part of next year, as you say, hoping to get Pro Gray Haney over the line very soon. Um, and there's some big fights out there, but I think it'll be towards the end of next year, it, you know, he's really going to work his way into a world title shot. What did you make of Joe Joyce and Zilei Sang tonight? I'm sure you watched it. Do you think maybe it's time for Joe Joyce to call it a day? It looked like the first fight, really, like watching it, it looked exactly like the first fight. Um, you know, I think Zilei Zhang, he, 
he's had times in his career, I was just talking about, do you remember when he fought on our Miami show on the Canelo undercard? And you would have looked at him there and thought, no chance can this guy, you know, compete in the top, probably in the top five heavyweight, five or six heavyweights now in the world, you have to say. Um, but it just shows, you know, he's a tremendous fighter. And he's, you know, for, for his age as well, look, he, look, he looks fitter than ever as well. You know, he's trained really hard. But I, yeah, I think that Joe, at 38 years old, it's probably time. But I know he says he doesn't want to. But it's heavy duty. Because he, all the way throughout his career, he's taken big punches. Although he's won the fight, you know, he's just walked forward. That's what he's done. And in heavyweight boxing, especially, not just the fight, sparring as well. You know, sometimes you have to make the right decisions for the long term. I think the right decision would be to retire now. But I, I think, from judging from what he's saying, he's going to carry on. It actually leads me on <coughs> conveniently to your little Asian trip this week. Mm. AJ Zilai Zhang, Bird Nest Stadium. Would you do it? You think that's what I'm going for? No, no I'm, I'm saying like. Do you know what? It's funny. We spoke about it a few years back, actually. Like, we always, always wanted to take AJ on a on a sort of worldwide tour, and that was one of the fights we looked at. Um, you know, look, he's, he's mandatory for the WBO now. That's probably going to take 14, 16 months, though. Is the, is the reality? to come round you know because I, I think they'll look at they shouldn't but I think they'll look at doing the undisputed fight then you've got the IBF fight if they choose to go that route uh, they shouldn't it should be IBF next but when you start looking at the timelines unless the belts get vacated you know 12 months is probably realistic but AJ's hang in the Burton <laughs> Stadium like that is just Muhammad Ali, George Foreman-esque type of situation when you're bringing it to a stadium like that. Do you believe that Matt room along with this kind of Asian vision trip that you're going on this week, bringing Japanese Matt room to life, is Chinese Matt room going to happen too? Look, our business is about global growth and, and, and building, you know, being the only promoter who promote boxing globally, week in, week out. That's what we do. You know, and that's that's our focus. Like say, uh, Japan's a focus that we're we're trying to get something done in. Um, Malaysia, I'm there as well. China is. We got ongoing conversations, um, and then all across the Middle East as well. You know, so part of the plan. And yes, the bird's nest for that fight would be amazing. Let's see. It's not what I'm going there for, but let's see. Showtime apparently are pulling boxing. What do you make of that decision? And did you foresee this happening at some stage? I mean, they've had the best year by far out of everyone. Yeah, look, they've had a tremendous year, delivered some fantastic fights. Um, uh, there's been talk for years about people going in and out. Like, you know, rumours are always interesting. A lot of the time they don't actually happen. They just end up being fake rumours. Um, the one thing that is interesting with Showtime is they've actually got no fights outside of really a pay-per-view schedule, really in terms of the majority of their fights are pay-per-view and they're big fights but there's a limit to how many pay-per-view fights you can do and deliver you know significant numbers on uh, there was always talk when, when they had the takeover that boxing was no longer uh, and the, the talk around the streaming platform etc that, that boxing was not part of their plans and didn't deliver what they needed it to but who knows like i say you can't they've done a you know delivered some tremendous events this year um but we'll, we'll see you know uh, HBO obviously left boxing a few years back now. You know, so it's not, nothing's impossible. Would you welcome PBC on the zone? Another competitor. I mean, you've got Sarland, you've got the Misfits thing yourselves on on the zone. Would you welcome PBC on there as well? Well, look, you got Golden Boy as well. Look, I'm sure they're looking at other options. You know, it's an interesting time in the broadcast market. You know, so many players involved in sport. Um, sport continues to grow. You know, year on year in terms of investment. Um, and I think they'll be looking at various opportunities. But, you know, look, the zone have worked with multiple providers. Um, you know, I'm sure they've had, at times, they've even probably had international rights as well from Showtime for PBC fights. But, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. Frank Smith, thank you very much for your time, mate. Appreciate it. Colin McGuigan, thank you very much for your time, mate. Need to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 